We live in a high-tech world. Everywhere we look, technology is taking over. We're walking around with computers in our pocket. You know, everything that we use is computerized now. Detroit is now becoming the next Silicon Valley. We have approximately 400,000 jobs that'll be available in the technology fields by 2022. But we only have about 40% of the workforce to fill those jobs. Well, I want our city, our people, to be the people to fill those jobs, especially within our own city. We are getting companies come back to this town almost every week. Microsoft moved in here from the suburbs. Detroit has tremendous potential, and I put all of my trust in young folks. You will be the future of Detroit. You will make Detroit what we are destined to be, which is the best. Detroit is limitless because of its people. Detroiters are some of the most resilient people, hardworking, hustlers. Detroit is limitless because there are infinite opportunities. Detroit is limitless because of students like me. We salute you today as future leaders of tomorrow. I want to congratulate you this morning on becoming a positive statistic in the city of Detroit. You are now a high school graduate, and that is worthy of applause. My name is Jova Arnold. I live in Detroit all my life. I'm 16 years old and I attended Westside Academy. This year, I graduated at the age of 16. On graduation day was a very special day. It's not only me, for my family members. to see me uh, walk across stage. Seeing him actually walk across that stage was like, oh my God, like you made it like you did it, and you did it early. Seeing him walk across that stage was just like the first step that he's gonna take into the world. Yo, Westside Academy 2019 graduating class. Joey's quiet. Joey's very quiet, very to himself. He's always been fascinated with computers since young. Anything dealing with computers, video games, he's on it. He catches on really quick when it comes to the technology. It's just in him, it's like he's drawn to it. I'm very proud, extremely proud. While I was in school, I self-taught myself how to code. Coding is telling the machine to do something. One of my favorite programming languages is this thing called CICS. And even anybody in mainframe will know this. But one of my first assignments was the ATM machine. Well, I was able to write code behind the ATM machine so that you could get money out of the machine. To say, you put your card in, there's code that recognizes you. If your PIN number is incorrect, it comes up and says incorrect PIN. That is not magic. That is a piece of code. If you want to get $100 out of the machine and you have two, there's a piece of code that says, yeah, no, that's not going to happen today. <laughs> you wrote this. Did they have that block format? Right here on the computer lab. 
This is where I started my coding experience. We have this challenge going. <laughs> I was a part of the Tills program and my teacher was Judy Dent. I could win this time. Huh? I got first this time. I learned some stuff about computers before the Tills program, but the Tills helped me expand my knowledge. TEAL stands for Technology Education and Literacy in Schools. We build and grow computer science programs by building a teaching team of volunteers and teachers. One of the huge biggest needs um, in computer science in Michigan right now are teachers. In 2016, there were only six new teachers trained in the entire state of Michigan to teach computer science. So TEALS started actually in 2009. We had a computer science teacher he was um, working with schools to kind of help them teach computer science. Well, he got a job at Microsoft, and he started to realize that his team in general didn't really do a lot of collaborative work until about 9, 30, 10 o'clock in the morning. And he felt like he could still help that first hour of the school day on his way to work. So he got permission, and he was able to actually drop in out of school and actually teach their computer science class on his way to work and still get a full day in every day. Next thing you know, 12 of his buddies we're all across Seattle teaching computer science. So he quit Microsoft um, and started a nonprofit called Teals. Within that first year of him running that nonprofit, he got approached by Satya Nutella, who is now the Microsoft CEO. He wasn't at the time, but, he, but now he is. He says, I want, we wanna help you grow Teals as fast as possible, and we wanna completely fund you. So that's how Teals came in to Microsoft. And so fast forward to today, we're in over 600 high schools across the country. We're in about 40 schools across the state, primarily Southeast Michigan, um, in the Metro Detroit area, the three counties, Macomb, Oakland, and, and Wayne. West Side Academy was one of the first schools that came on. Um, it was really great um, to be able to help their school just envision what computer science is, have an understanding of how it can affect their school and how it can give opportunities to their students. So we started working with Judy Dent um, there at the school. She was great. This is a lot of cold. Yeah, I did. Did you see how it's cold over here? Initially, I wasn't able to recruit students, but this year, I'm recruiting students. Please excuse me one second. You all have to step out of the room, please, and close the door. See, I am a teacher. <laughs> My teacher had told me to get into Python and other, other coding languages, and I just got hooked onto it. In the fall, I asked him to join our coding class. He jumped right into SNAP. He was moving ahead of the class. He was three assignments ahead, five assignments ahead. And I said, oh my goodness, what do we have going here? So um, we decided to unleash Python in the class, and Jovell was one of those people that embraced it. I kind of got it on the first day, like the first day of trying it. It was kind of easy, you know, print statements, variables. It, it was just simple stuff to me. I do want to become um, a software developer. He can use that ability, that talent, to excel and, uh, and to advance in life. If he chooses to do so, he has a lot to give back to the world. Uh, he can be the next great transformative genius in the world. And I would love to see that. I'd love to you know, help catalyze that. You gotta open it, you gotta close it with like precision. Oh, I definitely see him in the IT field. I see him as a leader. I really see him out engaging in the marketplace. He's really a people person as well as a technical person. It's really been an exciting journey to expose them to an area that just has so many opportunities and really there's a shortage of people. I was in IT 30 years ago, 35 years ago, and they had just invented the PC and we just couldn't visualize that it was going this way and no one really was coming into our circle that gave us an idea that everyone was gonna have a PC. When I just think of just Michigan alone, in Detroit and Ann Arbor, the hiring is unreal. Um, the company, all the companies I talk to, I think 
I keep hearing 300 people in three years, right? Like they need software developers. There's just a huge need for that um, in Michigan and nationally. Um, in Michigan alone, within the next five years, there'll be 270,000 open IT and computing jobs. And we only graduated uh, 2,000 computer science graduates last year in the entire state of Michigan. So that's a huge gap that we have to try to fill. Where do we put it? Forever. Okay, we put it under show number. And then you put input. Jovell is an, a prime example of our program putting that spark inside of a student and that excitement for them to learn computer science and be able to get in and have an internship at Microsoft. Like how, how often does that get to happen for a kid in Detroit? We're going to send it down this cord into there. A few months ago, we were at Microsoft's offices in downtown Detroit at a minority student day. How many people in here play Fortnite? OK, I figured. There was somebody that had to sit on a computer and code that game to work. There was about 100 to 150 students coming by to learn about the technology. I think the idea is there was to expose kids or younger adults to technologies and jobs in, in the technology fields. And a teacher mentioned that they have a special students that they would like us to meet. And this is where we met Jovell. Use your finger and cover the light level. Ooh, cool. We basically gave him a brain pad, which is a small circuit that's used for teaching kids, exciting kids about technology and coding. So he started with the brain pad and quickly picked it up and understood what needs to be done by himself in a few minutes. So somebody brought up the idea that why don't we have Jovell run the class himself? And he did. This is the brain pad right here. Think of it as like a miniature computer or an imitation of a computer. That is so cool. He was offered an internship at Microsoft that day. One of his teachers was telling me how intense he was and how much he uh, really loved computers and he was studying and learning things on his own. Um, learning to program on his own. And I said, well, that sounds familiar, because uh, I, I taught myself. I'm a software architect, born and raised in Detroit, grew up in Detroit, spent lots of time on, the, on these streets out here. When I was 12 years old, my dad and I were at Radio Shack. You remember them? <laughs> um, and dad was buying batteries. And I saw a book on programming microcomputers, and I thought, oh, this looks pretty cool. And I asked my father to buy the book for me. And he did. And I took it home and I read it cover to cover. And I started writing programs out on paper because uh, there was just no way we were gonna afford a computer at home. We just couldn't afford one. They were way too expensive. And I learned how to program in languages like C and Assembler and Algol and a whole bunch of these other languages without ever touching a computer. And that just kind of got me hooked. Whether you know it or not, whatever your passion is, Guaranteed there's some level of technology, and the sooner that you recognize that, the quicker you'll be able to tap into it. One saying that I love is creativity is evenly distributed throughout every zip code, opportunity isn't. We knew we wanted to figure out a way to engage the young students. The City of Detroit has this exceptional program called Grow Detroit's Young Talent, which provides summer internship experiences. If you're a GDYT youth, please raise your hand. This is my favorite week of the year. Congratulations to all of them. So it started with one intern, quickly grew to two, to four, to eight, to then 20. It was really amazing to watch how what started as how can we shape a summer experience for one student? Very quickly became a team of folks. The city of Detroit with Grow Detroit's Young Talent, Detroit Public Schools, Detroit School of Arts in particular, the Detroit Public School Foundation. What did he talk about? We have um, interns who are working at the Boys and Girls Club in order to help provide programming for technology for the youngsters that are attending there. While this is all going on, we have 11 Detroit School of Arts DSA students who are working on their craft. When I get older, I would like to do something possibly in film. In our day and age, media is where it's at. These kids are bright, brilliant. They do great video work. They're so innovative, they're so creative. And they have so much passion, so much drive that it just inspires me just seeing them do what they do.
I am a father of three beautiful little girls, five, seven, and nine year old. And I'm deeply saddened by friends, colleagues, people sometimes that ask me, what are your future plans for your company? You have girls. And I'm completely in shock by that question. Like, what is that supposed to mean? Girls are not, cannot do technology. They cannot run a manufacturing facility. Why? What, where did that perception come from? What can we do to fix that? Being in the technology field, being in manufacturing field, should be one of the options. I'm proud to start to build a life for myself. I'm Melanie Rayford, a student at Wayne State University. I'm studying computer science to be a software engineer, so I'm in the College of Engineering. I'm working with Microsoft this summer, working with the Boys and Girls Club, and it's basically being a mentor to a lot of kids uh, from Detroit, basically helping them with different workshops as far as encoding. And it's, um, basically it's a STEM camp. I really think it's cool, not only they're giving me this opportunity, but the fact that they are allowing me to network and meet a lot of uh, people and being in this field, and especially being a woman and an African woman at that, is really great to reach out and know a lot of people who are also doing what I'm doing. I've always grown up around technology, so if I put my mind to wanting to learn how to code, I will do it. I was in 10th grade when I started at the boxing gym. I was in the back like whole senior year <laughs> because the tutors in the computer lab was like my main support. It gave me a lot of opportunities like the Microsoft internship and also helped me build my resume. Thanks to the applications uh, that I filled out, I was able to receive two scholarships. One of the scholarships was for $20,000 from the Coleman and Young Foundation. And my second scholarship was $10,000 from the Shamrock 555 program. Thank you so much um, for everything. Um, this is really big because, like, you know, college is very expensive. <laughs> very expensive. And I just thought I wasn't going to um, be able to go because of all the expenses. <laughs> What inspired me to do this is that I do come from a background of technicians as far as my grandmother and my great granddad. She lived with her grandma and her mom. Her mom graduated with a degree in information technology. So that was an influencing factor. Her grandma graduated with a degree from Wayne in industrial engineering. She started out chasing technology and ended up doing industrial engineering until she died. When I um, went to school in the early 60s, they didn't have any computer science. And then somewhere about 70, the first mainframe came along, and that was exciting. So, And banks were in the leading edge of technology. And so my learning experiences, I went along with that curve, with that <laughs> flood at Comerica Bank. I was the head of architecture and technology planning. I did that until I retired, basically, and um, then worked for the city of Detroit for, with the mayor and uh, was the chief information officer for the city of Detroit. I spent a lot of my years with my grandma. She was always a woman who did for herself. If the computer will break, she'll fix it herself. <laughs> so just being around somebody like that really inspired me to do what I'm doing now. I always had this idea to start like a nonprofit organization for a woman who suffers from being alcoholic because that's who my grandma was. So, and she was in the tech field and she was so smart. She was so smart. There's a whole bunch of family stuff in there. And uh, so when I look at Melanie, I want her to be more than I ever was. She's off to a wonderful start.
<laughs> how are you? Good. How are you? Melanie represents for the future um, all the possibilities. Once she decided she was going to do this, she's going to do this. She has clarity, she has the confidence. And then what I also love about this young lady is that she's already talking about how to pay it forward. Like you're just starting your career, not even your career, your journey in education and still trying to learn. But she is so cognizant of the people who helped her to get here that she's already talking about what she can do to pull other people up. Just, she's all around, she rocks. My name is Marlon Williams. I am the Chief Program Officer for Tech Town Detroit, Assistant Vice President of Economic Development from Wayne State University, and I am probably most proud to be the founder of an organization called Sisters Code. We empower women ages 25 to 85 to just simply explore the world of technology. If you look up at the address bar, you'll see that the name of the page is whatever you put in your, um, in your code, okay? I learned to a code, it was called programming back then, I'm a mainframe programmer, uh, at the age of 25. I will tell you that that decision changed the trajectory of my life. Believing in myself enough to think that I could do this crazy thing just changed everything for me. There are barriers for women, so I, I always say that there's two, they're external and internal. The external piece could be um, the hiring practices of some, um, it could be um, some unconscious bias, some very conscious bias, some stereotypes about cultural fit. You're not replacing anything, you're adding the name of your page in between. Statistics have shown that a lot of women don't go into the STEM fields. So the number of women who are getting degrees in computer science and, or engineering are not the same from a gender perspective. The internal barriers is just a lack of belief. And I tell people, some women, you just gotta get out of your own way and know that you can do it. I do know for sure, when you have people who can tell you about the awesomeness of this career, it is also very important to have people who look like you, who come from the same place, people from your neighborhood. Gender-wise, you know, just all the, uh, the diversity spectrum, it is really important. And because of the diversity of thought, you want uh, different thoughts uh, at your table to make everything better. Everything from your businesses, um, be it a restaurant, be it a technology company, be it a retail store, whatever it is, you want that diversity of thought. Just like the first half. As of right now, the black team is in the lead. That's my team. Six. We got six. And the white team over here's got five. Let's go! Let's go! We're at Boys and Girls Club of Southeastern Michigan, and what you will see going on is one of our summer sessions taking place. Technology is like very important to start engaging our youth at a very young age. It's our goal and job to make sure that we're maximizing their usage and giving them skills that they can actually use into career fields once they leave beyond our doors. When you tilt it, that's what the accelerometer is. So when you move it, it changes. Everything is on a level playing field, right? That's how compasses work, right? Our mission is to literally provide youth um, with the world-class experience so they can be change agents for themselves, their lives, and their communities. And hopefully once they get those skills and go out, they'll come back and give that whatever we've given them and share with the rest of the youth that are coming through our doors. The Sean Anderson Foundation did sponsor for the new recording studio to be here, available for use to all the boys and girls of the Boys and Girls Club and anybody who has a dream, and anybody who wants to record music. So let's make some noise for that. Well, these concepts are truly innovative and will help bring the Boys and Girls Club into modern times. Being born and raised in the city of Detroit, I've been through Detroit public school system. And um, my mom was a teacher in Detroit public school system. So, you know, I've been through different schools and different locations and I see the lack of technology resources in a lot of our schools. I don't live in the city anymore. I live in the suburbs and my kids now, their schools have hundreds of computers in it. You know, every other classroom or computer labs. That's where the barrier lies. I call it the technological gap. 
Call 313 is a nonprofit that's partnered with Microsoft, um, Detroit Pistons, um, Boys and Girls Club, Southeast of Michigan, to provide access to technology and other STEM-related fields to youth uh, between the ages of 7 to 17. What is Loops? Uh, the Loops makes the stuff repeat. Makes stuff repeat? Yeah, so like you could repeat it for Just like repeat? 10 times. This is our Code Hoop Dreams classroom. We're utilizing uh, the brain pad uh, made by GHI Electronics. And with that, we're allowing the kids to really explore the wonderful world of coding. Getting the youth involved with it now at an early age uh, gives them that excitement and that passion early to be able to expand on that as they grow older uh, and be ready for all these new technical uh, advances that are coming. Now, how do we make it so when we press a button, our score goes up? JaVale's doing everything, you know, for us this summer. We brought them on board to teach our coding class. We had other instructors and teachers, but I said, no, you know what, I want somebody that's closer to the age of our, of our youth and participants for the summer. I want them to see that they can achieve that higher level quickly, um, like he did. They just have to put the passion behind it, put the work in, and they can be another Joe Bell. Earlier I saw 3D printing, I seen big old LED lights, and, it, and it, I think it's really cool. Right now we're showing off our brain pad, and we show people how to make video games and how we program robots. We make the code, and then we upload the code to the actual brain pad, and then the game. The brain pad is this little circuit that gets you really excited about technology. You are touching the electronics, you're touching the circuits, you're getting really close to, to what's happening. You're seeing the brain on the circuit. So you get an understanding of how technology actually happens. You can create your own ideas. You can develop on it, make robots. People ask me how we made these games and how does it work. And I'm helping a lot of people understand things and develop an interest in certain things. You just started the game. It's going to launch. Wait for it. Go. <laughs> I was born in Syria, so English is not my first language. And back then, I'm not that old, but back then there was no internet. And it was very difficult to learn about technology. It was very difficult to find the necessary knowledge that is more accessible today. I was never really interested in gaming on computers. Of course, games back then were not that exciting anyway but I was more interested in making the games, in programming the computer, in taking, in taking charge of the machine, making it do something. That, to me, that was uh, fascinating. There's something inside me that always pushed me into thinking of what can I do personally to give back. So, um, spending the summer with uh, Jubel, Melanie, and the other students really show that they are great potential. The idea here is not just Jovell. How many Jovells are out there? How many other students out there? Hadn't we exposed them to technology? Hadn't we exposed them to the possibilities? Hadn't we show them what is possible for them? They would be they would be lost otherwise. So exposing them to possibilities, showing them the options, would really open their eyes on things that they have not seen before. the power of technology to really have a serious impact on everyone's lives is what demands or necessitates that we do figure out how to empower as many people as possible because of the amount of good that it can cause. Going into the summer with Jovelle, Melanie, and the interns, um, I thought we were going in to teach them. It turns out that they taught us. I thought we were coming into it in order to create opportunities for them. We didn't even need to do that. All we needed to do was to expose them to the learnings, and they created their own opportunities. At the end of the summer, when the students reflected upon their experience, to say that their stories were moving and funny and witty and touching and aspirational and energizing all in one, really, I think, captured the spirit. and 
looking back on the summer, that was really gratifying. Some of the kids, 10 years from now, they'll look back and say, you know what, this was a spark for me. This was a life-changing moment for me that set me on a path for success. I'm limitless because I am unstoppable. Anything I put my mind to, it will get done. When people look back at this years from now, even myself, I'm hoping that they will look back at it as someone, as me being an inspiration to them. I do believe Detroit is limitless. Detroit is definitely limitless. Like, we're growing. <laughs> like, we're just going up from here. At this internship, I got, I got a lot of teaching skills because I was teaching a class of six to a 14 year olds and I basically taught them throughout the whole summer. We press the input, the brain process it, process what we wanted to do and it does the output, right? Can like one person tell me what each category does? I would say my goals are the same, but I'm a little bit more interested in teaching. He just lights up when he talks about teaching. He really enjoys that and really enjoys teaching code in particular. I used to be a teacher. I taught for 15 years. So anytime I hear that it, someone wants to go into that field, it just gets me super excited. This really is just the tip of the iceberg. Within each of the 100,000 plus young Detroiters, um, there's a story in each and every one of them. And it really is incumbent upon us to provide them exposure to opportunities, not only in and around technology, but in and around the jobs of today and tomorrow. Detroit is limitless. I feel like this is a place where opportunities and family and success just all comes together. Detroit has never given up, uh, even in some really pretty bleak down times. Um, we always seem to find that spark that keeps us going. We always have people who are willing to step up as leaders and to keep us moving forward. The limitlessness of Detroit is based on our spirit. My name is John Smith. I'm 15 years old, going into my junior year at DSA, radio TV major, really love what I do. What I want to go into is to broadcast journalism. I was really thinking about being a game designer. I had two colleges I'm interested in, which are Columbia University and Yale University. Whatever you do, whatever you put your mind to, it can be legendary and you can do big things. Whether you come from poverty or whether you come from a foster home or you don't go to the best of schools, you can still do anything that you set your mind to. I use technology on an everyday basis, whether it comes to social media or researching for projects or school. What role do you think technology will play in your future dream job? Uh, Technology will play like an important role in my future dream job because I might want to become a doctor like my mom and like technology can be a, like a huge part of that. I never knew how to code. People always tried to teach me, but it really wasn't clicking as much. But now I get it. I feel that my future is already, you know, good, but it's in my hands to make it come to life. Detroit is limitless because we're amazing. Our city is amazing. I've lived in Detroit all my life, and you should always start from where you live and where you love.